played violin from I guess sounds like elementary school to junior high to oh, high man, school. Oh man, I suck earlier in life. It was wow. really, really, really bad. I started learning violin in fifth grade. Okay. And all the way from fifth grade to eighth grade, it was terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> the epiphany was in eighth grade. I was in junior high school orchestra. And, and you have to understand, I was a scrawny, very backwards, geeky kid. I could never have played sports. And so I was pretty much a loner. And then all of a sudden, I was with all these other musicians. And here's what's really cool. When I played, it was part of an overall thing. And believe me, now that I think about what we sounded like then, it sucked too. But, but you know what? <laughs> when you're a kid, you don't see that. What you see is that you are one of a team of people making noise. That taught me more about playing in ensembles. That taught me more about playing harmony parts mm -hmm. and background parts and playing um, structured music that way. How old were you when you came to I was three years old when I came to the U.S. and the first place we lived was Texas. And my dad was a college professor, so we traveled a whole bunch until we finally settled down in Mount Lebanon in 1967. My mom and dad were very, very, very much involved in music and dance in India. My dad was an excellent, excellent sitar player. Okay. And my mom did classical Indian dance, and they both sang. Um, my dad actually performed on radio shows in India, so it was um, very uh, different from, from what they found when they came over here. <laughs> one really cool thing about my dad, when we moved to the United States, one of the first things that dad said was, you should think of yourself as taking the best of all cultures. Don't consider yourself Indian, don't consider yourself American. He said, as far as life is concerned, take the best of all cultures and find what brings them together try not to, to be divisive. And I've lived with that philosophy and tried to teach that philosophy to my daughter, to my students, and I was able to incorporate that musically, which is don't take, don't make it divisive, don't say that I just want to do classical and, uh, and be a classical elitist or a jazz snot or, or a country redneck. You can go and you can do everything. <laughs> There is no way that I can listen to one channel. Or when I'm watching TV, I'm, I'm an incessant channel flipper. Um, not because I don't think that I have the attention for it, it's just that I appreciate so many different things. And that is something that is not strictly cultural, but it certainly helps. I actually had a guitar when I was 10 years old. And I had in typical fashion, the Elvis, Pre Elvis Presley syndrome, where, you know, I figured that if, if I learned how to play my guitar and shake my hips, I would be a rock star. Bing, bang, boom. <laughs> and one of my favorite tunes is Eleanor Rigby from the Beatles. The, the string quartet is just, you know, the George Martin feel on that has transcended what that song would have been Without it, Dust in the Wind is the, the song that brought me into playing rock and roll violin. The band Kansas was the first to a classically trained violinist and put him smack dab in the middle of this huge fusion rock and roll. The next thing that I, I loved was uh, Jean-Luc Ponty, and Jean-Luc Ponty not only did fusion violin, but to combine that with synthesizers and electronics, and all of a sudden he was playing electric violin. 
And I'm, I, I know I'm, I'm skirting the question in terms of songs and more into artists, but you get the idea of what's going on. I, I have favorites from every kind of thing for violin. When you're playing with corned beef and curry, do you have a favorite song oh, that yeah. you guys do yes. that you really like? Our rendition of The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, when it came out back in 1974-75. It was a great song. It was just a long, freaking song. It seemed to go on and on, and it was boring. And when John and I started doing this, I don't know what it was. John started singing it one night, and uh, I started playing violin to it, and started building it dynamically. And it was, when you get two guys that are trying to do a song that has been recorded by a guy and an orchestra, it's very difficult to try and find things to do. And yet, the crowd response was ridiculously positive, and they said, we want to hear it again. And in particular, what I did, something very unusual, at the end of the song, um, we go into a violin solo that definitely was never part of the original, and the other thing is I've never played the same violin solo twice. How do you find that it changes maybe the venue? Like you might do something different at one very place? Very much, very much. It's my favorite corned beef and curry song to do because it just takes me to uh, right then and there, in whatever length of time it's going to be, whatever, I close my eyes, I zone, and I go.